Okay, today we're going to be talking about the dehaze tool. We're going to be looking at it in both Lightroom and in Photoshop. It's a very simple tool and it's often overlooked by a lot just because it's hidden down here at the very bottom. So in Lightroom, I've closed all the tabs. You look here on the right under effects, you've got your post crop vignetting and underneath that we've got some controls for grain and there's this dehaze tool. Basically, it's another element to add to your bag of tricks for controlling contrast. It works different than clarity and it works different than contrast. It's kind of hard to describe, so I'm just going to show you. So if we click inside the dehaze tool, this is going to apply over the whole image. Watch what happens when we increase it in increments of 10. So there's 10, there's 20, there's 30. Basically, I use this tool all the time specifically to bring out detail and draw attention to my sky and highlights I guess. It works really well for some of these overexposed areas. I'm going to actually drop this down to 20% because I don't want to have it affect my foreground as much but I want a little bit more of it to show up in the sky so we're going to go up here to our graduated filter. I've already got it preset to dehaze and I'm going to turn this all the way up just so we can see the area that's getting affected. So I'm going to click and we're going to just, I'm holding shift so I draw a nice straight line and I'm going to create this graduated filter so it just affects the sky. I'm going to set it back down to zero and now I'm going to slowly bump it up in increments of 10 again and we'll go to 30. Nope, that's a little bit too much. I'll go to 20. So, very quickly, I have been able to bring detail and some color and some texture into this sky area without having to mess with a bunch of controls. It's really simple and it's a very powerful tool. Like any other tool when it comes to processing pictures, you can overdo it. But when done with moderation, this tool can help you bring out the absolute best parts of your image. So that's it in Lightroom. We use it here under the effects panel and you can use it in selected areas using your selective adjustment tools whether it's a graduated filter or the radial adjustment or the adjustment brush. We did it with a graduated filter just because we're modifying the sky. I'm going to show you the exact same tool in Photoshop. The only difference is inside Photoshop I have already created a selection of my sky so I can apply this filter with a little bit more control. So I'm gonna duplicate my current layer. We're gonna call this one D haze. I'm gonna go to my filter adjustments and do camera raw filter. And it's going to appear in our effects panel just like it did in Lightroom. And we're gonna turn it all the way up. And I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna duplicate this layer again and turn this one off. So basically if I set this layer to 20% right there that is what we applied in Lightroom down here with our effects panel we applied 20% across the entire image and that's that's what we did right here but again we want to do a little bit more with our sky so I'm going to select my sky alpha channel and I'm going to create a layer mask where we only reveal that sky area. And I'm going to start at 10% and bump it up to 20. And we go 30. We can go a little bit more. We can probably push it to 40% with our sky because we have a nice perfect selection of our sky. The reason why we had limitations in Lightroom with the adjustment layer is because with the adjustment layer it's going to start affecting our mountains and some of the areas that don't need help. So we can only do so much with a graduated filter because it's a blanket effect and it starts to change areas of the image that don't need to be changed. In Photoshop, we can be highly selective and we can push those bounds a little bit more. So let's see how 50% looks. That's looking a little bit too much, especially right here in these deep blues. So we're gonna back it off to 40 again. And that is our dehaze tool. I will probably duplicate this layer one more time. We're going to set it to 100%. I'm going to create a layer mask. We're going to reveal all and I'm going to create a graduated filter in Photoshop. 
So we're going to start at the top of the image and we're going to go to about 75% down to the bottom. So if we turn off all of our adjustments, this is what that looks like. We have basically recreated the graduated filter inside Photoshop. One of the reasons I'm doing that is because I want the filter to apply just a little bit to these mountainous elements right there at the sky, which will help ease up the contrast difference between the horizon line. So we don't have this super stark line between a nice contrast in our sky and a really hazy mountain. We're going to kind of bridge that gap by throwing in that graduated filter. And I'm going to turn this opacity down to about 50%. So you can see right there in that mountain that helps ease up the difference between the top of the horizon line and below it. But that also pushed a lot more detail and color into our sky. And so we're going to take our sky layer and back that down to 30. Let's go to 20%. Overall, I'm pretty solidly happy. And again, the main reason why we're in Photoshop for this effect is just to have a little bit more control over where the adjustment is applied specifically. We have to do blanket adjustments in Lightroom, but we can be pretty specific in Photoshop. And that's why we're here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and we're going to go back to Lightroom and just compare the difference. And the differences will be subtle, but they will be different. So this is our Lightroom image and this is our Photoshop image. So there's a little bit more color. There's a little bit more detail because we can push those lines just a little bit more with a fine tuned selection instead of a blanket selection. So there's Lightroom again and back to Photoshop. So that's it, the dehaze tool. It's very powerful. It's a tool that I use in pretty much all of my work, whether it's a landscape shot or a portrait shot. I find myself using that tool on a daily basis. I hope this helps. I hope you can see the advantages of this tool. It helps you bring in some more detail without that fringe that tends to show up with clarity. It also preserves a little bit more detail than the contrast tool itself. So if you haven't used the dehaze tool in the past, check it out because it's freaking awesome. Happy shooting, guys.